Garf. Oh fuck, he stopped now. Have you finished all the uh, songs now? You finished? Yeah. You finished? He's finished. Sweet. Daniel Lopatin. What? He's the guy we're reviewing today. Do you know? Pay attention. He's just recording alias for one of tricks. Never point. Never. New album. <laughs> Garden of Delete. One of tricks. Never point. Never. Never point. Never. Daniel is an American experimental musician, composer, producer, and owner of a Brooklyn-based record label, Software. This album is insane. It's fucking insane. I can imagine for some people, this kind of music is not very accessible, but to me, it was an awesome experience in noise, tone, and texture. Didn't like it when he fondled Wally at the start, though. <laughs> it did sound a little bit like that. <laughs> like, yeah, although, yeah. although that intro, it that gives you a pretty cool. solid idea of what's yeah. like yeah. gonna happen in the album. Yeah. Ezra was kind of a, kind of amazing, wasn't it? It, it was, was, it was brilliant. brilliant. It was such a good song. It was just everything happens just constantly. There's just things. There's know. crazy jazzy double bass, and then there's like an old school breaks UK hardcore sort of crazy synth art like going on. And there's like 80s video game sound yeah, stuff. Big choppy then... Simpson vocal samples. I love the way it could go from minimalist mm. to just the wildest shit. Mm. And it doesn't and seem like awkward. Yeah. The transitions always work. It was so work. diverse. Yeah, so concise and just mm. like it managed to stay with one song rather than just being mm. like, oh yeah, we're just gonna do something completely different. Mm. But they did do that, or mm. well, he did do that. Yeah. But it was still like, oh, it's just so good. Just every bit of it, you're just like, okay, so the crazy ar ar arpeggiated synth line has started, and now, oh, now there's some jazzy bass line, but you never ever like, oh, why is there a jazzy bass line yeah, now? It's it always, always like, worked. Oh yeah, now it's the next thing. Yeah. It was like glitchy as hell as well. Mm -hmm. This whole album is glitchy as hell and it's awesome. Yeah, you kind of get snapshots, like constantly, like snapshots, just like a different like musical idea that just all, sometimes you listen to a song and you don't, you think three songs have happened, but yeah. it's just been one kind of opera of noise. Mm. Crazy. Or in, uh. or in some of them, many more than that. <laughs> Sticky drama also, also actually incredible. Before you oh, get sticky drama, I just want to mention just before, an interesting little thing. Before. Echo Jam. How dare you? Echo Jam C1, you prick. It's like, a, it's yeah. like a, a, an interlude. Yeah. It's the second song, if you just count the intro. Mm. Just like on Currents. You see, I would... Oh, I mean, yeah. mentioned there, it's kind of weird that you have an interlude after just the first song. But there's bass, there's an intro. So, yeah, I, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, they're just putting another like little Another idea. little thing, yeah. And there's another one, isn't there? Is that actually that Echo Jams C1? Yeah, like track five is like another mm. interlude thing. Echo Jams C1 really reminded it was because it was kind of like it was kind of stoned. It was kind of just chilled and weird. It really reminded me of Illusions by Cypress Hill. Mm. If you've ever given that track, yeah. or something. Oh, I guess but so. it's kind of awesome. I'm like, oh yeah, this this is only like, like 32 seconds. <laughs> I know. A lot can happen. Drama like, that is was not drama. only 32 seconds. That's like eight. That's what, it's a longer track than the other. This is an eight-minute no. monster yeah, it's of a sticky track. drama. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, it's not. No. No. Uh, no. No. Sticky drama was four minutes. No. 13. Mutant standard was the Mutant longest track. Mutant standard uh. was the eight-minute monster. Yeah. So yeah. sticky Stick, drama. Sticky drama. <laughs> right. Was also, it fucking insane? Amazing. Yes. Again, like this massive distorted pad thing is just like bam right in your face, which was like bam. bam! Yeah. <laughs> It was like, well, oh, I actually punched you in the face over there. <laughs> <laughs> and this, then this very much had a sort of Portal Robinson style of that sort of big distorted stuff as well, mm. which is just awesome. And then sounds. it just like later on, it just develops into absolute chaos. The bass in this was huge. The big bass synth that comes in like half really through. Aphex Twin actually. Yeah, oh. yeah, very. Aphe I got Aphex. That was like too. one of the sound effects he used. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but the fucking. Blast beat that you get in a song, like it's just, it's like mimicking, mm. like a heavy metal song, 
using electronic sounds completely. Mm, the drums could or even black I feel metal, like I these know. songs are composed at about like two million BPM. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> when he puts a kick on every beat, it is like, and you're just like, whoa! What is happening? Calm down, but it's awesome. A mutant standard. You just skipped right over SDFK. Another cool short interlude. Oh track. no, you're right. SDFK. That was like old school minimalism. That was one yeah. of my favorite I'm tracks. Now it was super like, cool. I'm talking like way back when. I'm talking sixties mm. electronic minimalism. It was super cool. It was yeah. so old school, but then it has like a really modern climax right at the end, and you're like, oh, that was so weird. How it just went into the like crescendo industrial awesome, yeah. rock beat. It kicked. It it's crazy. like slamming. It kicks Slam ass. In your face. This song actually had a strong dead mouse vibe for me. Yeah, it with is. the piano, like yeah. a lot of his sort of big synthy stuff that he does. Mm. I can feel that. But Mutant Standard. The eight minute monster. The longest minute, track on the whole album. Which really shows how he can really fucking like, after the the beginning is a bit like, it's the same sort of repetitive bass yeah, for quite a while. Yeah, it's slow to progress. Like the first two minutes takes a while. But then it goes kind of crazy. And then it's literally like we were saying for the first track, it's new stuff constantly, no bad transitions. Everything's interesting and different. For six minutes straight, yeah. just yeah. stuff happens. And the problem happens, that I had counts. with this track was that it was such a long track and so many new things happening. I kind of felt where with the uh, with Ezra, I was like, yeah, it's like doing loads of crazy stuff, but it's still concise. Mm. In Mutant Standard, it was it was kind of going. It was going all over the place, and it wasn't really sticking to one thing. But at the same time, I didn't mind that it was doing yeah. that because it was kind of like a collage of weird ideas, and mm. it was like, "This is cool." I've gotten used to, like, Ezra was great at like weaning me into this album, mm. and now I'm like, "Yeah, I can just take me where you want, take me where you want." Yeah, motherfucker. yeah. The song could go from like lush and textured to just, I describe it as Frankie goes to Hollywood to come techno, kind of vaporwave as well. Yeah, a fucking vaporwave. It's just hilariously good and bad at the same time. Mm. But there was, I love the kind of odd samples from like films you'd get in this. Yeah. And at one point it's like really disgusting, like squelchy, like meat slicey noises. It I, was- I want to talk a bit more generally about- the description. The later <laughs> Yeah. Cause especially, I think you made a good point. We said Ezra's like the introduction to his album. And then uh, Mutant Standard is like the big monster of like, look what it's I can like do, it's this huge brother. And then yeah. near the end, the, the rest of the songs after ch- sort of that sort of style, Child of Rage onwards, I think they focus more on ideas. And they still have a lot of this like sort of choppiness, but it, they are more focused on a thing. And they use, he uses a lot, he starts using a lot of what I, I think are vocaloids. Mm. But he has very synthesized sounding Interesting. vocal. Like when I heard the, it was Animal was the first one I heard it on, and I, it gave me that portal vibe again, because I was already getting it from his album. I was like, is that a vocaloid? I think it might be. And he uses them a lot in this album going further on, but they're sort of quite far back in the mix, so you can't realize that they're not like real singers. Yeah. But they're interesting sounds, and all of these sounds have really interesting stuff going on with them. I bite through it. Gave me some more Dead Mouse vibes. Yep. But perhaps with a little more of that kind of noise music mm. element in there, thrown in. And then in the middle it gets kind of delightful. It's instrumental. Mm. This is this is one of those songs where he does something really slow and like mm. just starts and all of a sudden it's yeah. just like bam in your face. Like whoa! <laughs> it's like And then and then and then after about 20 seconds, it's just like, and slow again. Yeah, it's, it's like- And then, whoa! It's like he made it goes this, so intense at the end of that song. It's like he made this album in a DAW that was set to like 200 BPM. Yeah. And the fast bits are straight 200 BPM on the beat, and then he goes half time down to like 100. And it's suddenly so slow compared to what it was. But it, it like I said, the transitions are always so good that it never feels awkward. You're never like, oh God, it's slow again. You're like, oh, it's slow. And then during the outro, he kind of tries to mash them both together and mm. tries to have these really crazy distorted going bits the going over mm. the slower bits. And it, it works. Mm. And it's kind of crazy because you're like, this shouldn't work. Yeah. <laughs> but it does work. One of the songs that made, what was just like, it was so many different songs sort of put together mm. was Freaky Eyes. Because, this yeah. is what Gareth was saying earlier. He said something about him doing a church gigs. Yes. 
gigs in churches. He oh. he, he he doesn't book out like normal, uh, you know, like the O2 in Brixton or whatever. He tries to book out like churches and theatre halls and stuff so that he can get better acoustics. Interesting. And in this song, I got like kind of like a horror church theme. It had like an organ intro, but oh. it was like a synth organ mm. and like really atmospheric. And I, then the first half of the song reminded me so much of Hans Zimmer's score of Interstellar. I, which yeah, was yeah, I can see that. Just, I can see that. Which I am absolutely crazy about as well. That yeah. was an amazing score. And then the synth like develops these new rhythms and shit. And then it just cuts out it to like this really weird as well, chill sample song. Mm-hmm. It's all mm-hmm. fitting together. Lift. Lift me. Baby. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have more to say about the Holy Pinky fucking Eyes. shit! This is a six minute, 31 song. It needs time. The old school outro, it delivers themes that fit the album. He said themes. He said themes. And. And. He it said feels and. As though at this song, because you're on track 10 at this point, yeah. you're like, this album could be sampling itself in the way that it's, <laughs> it's delivering these things which it's been giving you throughout the whole album. And they seem familiar. But at the same time, they're just like completely radical new ideas. And you're like, I'm really getting into the fact that this is so radically different at times, but it still feels as though it's one full album. Yeah. Now we can move on. It's awesome. Lift. Lift. <laughs> you want to talk about Lift? Lift had some cool choppy guitar stuff. I yeah. wasn't a massive fan of this one. I didn't think it was one of the strongest. I thought it was, I thought it was very quite good unnerving. Techno. Yeah. You know why I say unnerving? Because it feels like the chord, the chord structure, and then the melody on top, they were kind of out of key of each other at some points, very kind of distant, and it was mm. just it kind of just puts you on edge. I don't know about you guys, but that's how it felt for me. No good was a big, distorted, I triumphant ending to the album. Loved no good. It was one of the great examples of the sort of the the way he uses both the really soft bits. Mm. And then the huge heavy bass comes in. The middle of it is destructive and huge and massive and distorted, and then it goes back to the really soft bit for the end. With the, yeah, I felt again, the as though this was the worst on the album. Seriously, mm, I thought yeah. it was one of my favorites. It's one of the best. Yeah, yeah. I love the reason one. for this is because it did the whole we're going to do something chill, and then something really distorted, and then something chill again, but then that was it. Like mm. it, it I just it went. Was... It did it once. It did yeah. chill, distorted. Chill, and then the song ends. In a weird way, I was interested in that though because everything else has been so much this, that, this, that, this, that, so much stuff that when it did that, it ended. I was like, oh, that was surprisingly simple. And it was quite nice. It so was simple, sort of simple, but ending. I felt as though Lift, the previous yeah, song, was also quite simple, and the fact that it followed on straight from that, I was like, I kind of, I, I'm starting to miss these like chaotic mm-hmm. arrangements that he's been doing. So, what would be your favourite track on the album or track, sir? Okay. Favourites on the album. Favourites on the album. Mm. I'm going to have to say Ezra and Ezra. Sticky Drama. Oh, yeah. But yeah. then Mutant Stand is incredible. Mm. I Bite Through It is incredible. And Freaky Eyes are incredible. Oh, but yeah. I'm not going to put them all on them. I'm mm. just going to put Ezra and Sticky Drama as my two favourites. Yeah. I want to put Sticky Drama. I really love parts of I Bite Through It like the most on this album. Mm. Uh, and No Good. I'm going to have to go like that. That's going to be it. Ezra, Mutant Standard, No Good. And animals. Sweet. Then marks out of ten, James. No, Gareth. Then marks out of ten, Gareth. I love this album. Yeah. Nine out of ten. Oh, he said it. That hasn't helped me. <laughs> Kit. <laughs> I'd give this an eight out of ten. A solid eight. No, a good eight. That doesn't help me either. Sorry. Uh, I'm gonna go with a super strong eight. A super strong eight. A super sore eight. Can can Isaac give it Super Saiyan here? <laughs> I mean, I guess. I guess he can do whatever he wants. Super He's the man with the power. He's a magician. And if you like men in power, give us a like. <laughs> on Freeze press that like button for this video. And uh, maybe even consider hitting that uh, subscribe button. We'd find that just the most pleasurable thing. The most pleasurable thing. More pleasurable than men in power. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to go there. And leave a comment on, uh, you know, who's, who's the sexiest man in power right now? Is it Putin? Because he don't give a fucking shit. It's and he def- got it's that definitely power. Putin. Oh, yeah. Putin makes Skrilla, too. Hot Skrilla. 
James? No. Come on. No. Come on. No. Come on. No. I'll do it on your behalf. No.